All right. Uh, so today we have uh, the lab eight, that is the uh, gas liquid chromatography. So let's see how we can interpret uh, the things in the uh, liquid uh, GC chromatograms. So in order to um, interpret the chromatograms, you should know two things. The first thing is absolute retention time. So whatever in the chromatogram that you're going to see is the absolute retention time. So the first peak, very small peak, uh, onto the left would be your solvent peak or ethanol peak. And then the other ones are the high, the high intensity peaks will be your compounds. So whatever the uh, on the x-axis you have the time that uh, these compounds um, came out uh, and it was detected by the detector. So that is the absolute retention time. However, due to the practical issues, like no matter how careful the operator is, uh, multiple runs of the same sample on the same chromatogram will give slightly different absolute retention times. So because of that, we are calculating something called adjusted retention time. So what we are doing is uh, in the case of adjusted, so we denote it as like T prime R by you are taking the compound peak and subtracting the ethanol peak, which is the small peak. For example, so in this, so the compound X, it's at uh, the TR is at 3.25 and then this small peak is at 0.75 minutes and you subtract and then your T prime will be 2.50. So in real life, when you're running a GC, what happens is you will be having a sample with a mixture of compounds and you want to identify what are these compounds. Then you will be having a slightest idea of like, okay, this one has this specific smell or anything, this sample. So you kind of have an idea, okay, this could be a compound X, Y, Z. So you run the pure compound X, Y, Z and you collect the chromatograms. You calculate the adjusted retention times. Then you run your unknown sample again and you see that there's two peaks which corresponds to two compounds. And now you calculate the adjusted retention time of the unknown as well. So for the first peak, you get two minutes. The first, second peak is 2.50 minutes. And now you look at which compound, which pure compound has that adjusted retention time. So the two minutes is compound Y. So this first peak is compound Y. And then you have 2.50 of compound X. So in your unknown mixture, you have compound X and Y. So that's how you would determine. Now let's look at a um, real world spectrum. So a real world spectrum is slightly different. So this is how it would look like. You see that there are four peaks, but you don't worry about all the four peaks. Only you worry about this first peak, which is the solvent peak, and then the highest intensity peaks. So the, if this is for a, a pure compound, if you're standard, still you see small other peaks. Don't worry about that. So what you have to do is then you're La tallest peak which is the peak number three at 0.569 your retention time is at 0.569 you subtract the peak one which is the solvent peak 0.398 by 0.569 and that would be your adjusted retention time so it's easy if you can take a uh, excel sheet and you can report your retention time for the solvent peak and then for corresponding each of the uh, whatever the standards you are running and then you can calculate the adjusted retention time in a in the next column. So that is the part A. And then uh, what you can do is you go to your unknown sample mixture chromatogram and you do the same. You can put the peak number and peak retention times and calculate the adjusted retention time. And then you can uh, ID them based on the uh, retention time compare the retention times and say, oh, okay, so this both have the same adjusted retention time. So this unknown peak might be whatever that compound. And then you have to do the relative response factor and normalize peak area and percentage compound uh, in to quantify this. So that is uh, explained in the subsequent uh, sections in the manual. So I hope uh, that you all will be able to uh, complete those things.